Well, this ought to be a fun one. Today, we're talking about all those motorcycles you probably use as a desktop wallpaper and tell your buddies you're gonna be picking up next week once your paycheck hits. Yep, all these are motorcycles. They're Halo bikes, the biggest and baddest leader bikes available in order from the wimpiest sub 200 horsepower nerd bikes to the absolute units farting creatine and asking if you even lift. Bro. Here's some rules for today since we could end up talking about one-off custom motorcycles with V8s in them because custom cruiser boys have lost their grip on reality. First of all, every bike is 1000 cc's or under, and second, every motorcycle is street legal. That means you can run out and buy any bike on this list and ride it home. We're also going to give you some exhaust clips because sure, most of these bikes are inline fours and they all have their own unique sounds and who doesn't like a nice brap every now and then? As a teaser, one of these bikes on this list is going to be our brand new new expert bike giveaway motorcycle over on yamanoob.co. That's right, one of the most powerful motorcycles on the planet, and you can win it for free by clicking the links down below. We've got yamanoob.co where you'll get access to the Discord server, which is a great place to hang out and talk bikes with riders from all over the world. Also, the Discord boys already know what the new giveaway bike is and have seen some exclusive behind the scenes content about it. You can also check out yamanoobmerch.com and get yourself some lovely merch and entries to win every dollar you spend. Finally, there's a brand new YN Moto store where you can buy yourself gear, tools, parts, tires, and all sorts of goodies for your ride, and every dollar you spend there is an entry to win too. Stay tuned later this week to see what the new giveaway bike will be, but in the meantime, why don't you take a guess in the comments down below. Now, number 10 goes to the Ducati Panigale V2. This one's a good reference point seeing as how we recently gave one away, and you can see exactly how fast it is which I'm sorry to burst your bubble Ducatistas, but your fancy red pasta rocket just isn't all that fast in the modern world. It's elegant and exotic, sure, but comparing to the rest of the bikes on this list, you might as well just be riding an R3. The Panigale barely edges out the Ninja 1000 with a 955cc V-twin, putting down 155 horsepower and 77 foot-pounds of Torgorinos. Thanks to its 441 pounds wet weight and racing heritage, it is capable of reaching a higher top speed of 176 miles per hour. But when you're sending this thing down the front straight of Mugello, you'll find that's a little breathless towards the top of the power band. The main thing that's holding the V2 back is the fact that it's a V-twin. They're great power plants and make a mean sound. Take a listen. The truth is that they're just not as competitive. It's why you don't see any V-twins gritting up in GP or in World Superbike for that matter. Now, what the V2 has that a lot of other bikes on this list don't have is style. The only way to describe the Ducati is achingly gorgeous. It is a two-wheeled work of art and it's worth every penny of its $16,795 price tag. Now with number 9, we finally get into the first of our competition superbikes, the Honda CBR 1000 RR. The Honda has always been considered one of the less interesting leader bikes out there, but it's got an extremely loyal collection of diehard riders who are always ready to defend their motorcycle's honor in the comments section. Oh, Fireblade boys, never change. The CBR is putting down 189 horsepower and 84 foot-pounds of Torginos out of its 999cc inline 4, capable of reaching an electronically limited 186 miles per hour. Spoiler alert, all of the Japanese superbikes are limited to 186 miles per hour, so we'll start using 0 to 60 to give you some better ideas of speed. It'll do 0 to 60 in 3.2 seconds and clear a quarter mile in 10.7 sections, which is pretty darn quick. Despite it being down on power, the CBR is helped out by a crazy low 432 pound wet weight. Only one motorcycle on this list is lighter. It's also the cheapest of the bike on the list if you don't count the Ninja 1000, coming in at only $16,499. A hot tip if you're looking for a super cheap super bike, if you wait until 2022, you'll likely find a bunch of zero mile 2021 CBR 1000 double R's going for dirt cheap. For some reason, dealerships can never seem to move these bikes, and you can usually find screaming deals on them. Number eight goes to our last beginner bike on the list, the Suzuki Jixer 1000R. That's right, the Jixer. Despite what all the Suzuki faithful in the comments down below might say, it's not actually putting down 200 horsepower, and it's not a real bike. You need to trade it in it right now and get a Busa if you want to go super fast on a Suzuki. The Jixer's putting down an absolutely feeble 199 horsepower and 87 foot-pounds of Torcos out of its 1000cc inline 4. Guess they should have stuck with the K5 engine after all, huh? 
Those fancy variable valves clearly aren't getting the job done in an 05 Jixer Thou is faster than a V4S anyways, right? It certainly doesn't help that the Jixer 1000R is a portly 448 pounds wet and ready to ride. It can only do a 2.90 to 60 and a 10.2 second quarter mile. What an absolute waste of $17,999. I mean, all you get is the X-Star livery and an LCD dash. Come on, Suzuki. Also, let's see if any of those Jixer bros in the comment section down below understand sarcasm. I bet there's some real nerd rage going on down there. Let's twist the knife a little harder. The Jixer 1000R is what would happen if Florida was a motorcycle. Let's take a listen to this miserable disappointment. <laughs> Just kidding, Suzuki boys, you guys make some really good bikes and I'm so sorry. Number seven goes to the Yamaha R1M, an actual good motorcycle. You can trust me, I'm totally not biased. This is Yamaha's ultimate street bike offering. It literally does not get any faster. You've got the R1's legendary 998cc crossplane inline four putting down 200 horsepower and 83 foot pounds of Torgoranimos. It's also packing a full set of carbon fiber fairings, electronically adjustable Olins, a smartphone app that lets you change all the electronic nannies, and it's one of the best sounding motorcycles on the list. Take a listen. The R1M tips the scales at 450 pounds. It can go 0 to 60 in 2.6 seconds with a 9.8 second quarter mile time. The only catch is that Yamaha makes a very limited run of them every year, and it's a spicy meatball at 26,099 bucks, which is expensive for sure. But it's not the most expensive bike on the list. It might be in the bottom half power wise, but it's a great package and a total flex when you roll up on that next track day. Now, if only you were good enough to use all that power. Number six, the Kawasaki ZX-10R. Making up for the absolute atrocity that is the Ninja 1000, the ZX-10R is the leader bike the Cowie boys aspire to if they're planning on going fast in circles. Its 998cc inline four is putting down 200 horsepower and 85 foot-pounds of torgs, which is just barely edging out the R1M. It's a bit heavier than the Yamaha at 456 pounds wet and ready to ride, but I don't think Jonathan Rea really cares, but that accounts for its slower zero to 60 time, managing only 2.8 seconds. However, over the quarter mile, it's a whole tenth of a second faster than the R1. I do need to include a little caveat though. I can only find times for the 2016 ZX-10, so expect those numbers to be a little bit smaller than what we're reporting, but not by much. You can get yourself a ZX-10 for 17,399 bucks, which is a lot of bike for the money, but if you're feeling fancy, you can get the ZX-10 double R for $28,999, but let's be honest, it's not any faster and you're not going to ride it any faster, it's just got some extra gizmos and gadgets. Let's get a quick sound check. <laughs> Number five, the Aprilia RSV4 RR. Now, before you get your Alacia Spargaro branded undies in a twist, remember the rules. Bikes need to be 1,000 cc's or less, so you'll have a fifth place and you will like it. Yes, the new RSV4 is putting down 217 horsepower, but it's also a 1073 cc engine. However, if you go back a few years, you have the RSV4 RR, which was a 999 cc V4, putting down 201 horsepower and 86 foot-pounds of torque Onos. What you do know from a smaller engine equals less power, but it's still a rocket ship. The RSV4 RR can go from 0 to 60 in 2.7 seconds and clear a quarter mile in 10 seconds flat. Still not quite as fast as an R1M and the ZX10, but hey, you can flex that one extra horsepower. That or flip up the board, change the rules, and get an 1100. Take a listen to what a hopped up V4 from the Noale factory sounds like. Number four goes to the BMW S1000 RR. No qualifications or excuses to make here, the bike is just blisteringly fast. The S1000 RR is the zenith of German motorcycling prowess, putting down a formidable 207 horsepower and 83 foot-pounds of Torgs. It's also crazy stupid light tipping the scales at only 427 pounds. For the record, an MT-07 weighs 414 pounds and puts down 75 horsepower. Yeah, it's a rocket ship. The BMW has so much technology crammed into it that it'll basically ride itself, which makes it a bit of a bummer compared to all the other bikes in the category, but when it comes to bikes like this, I can understand someone foregoing character for power and pedigree. I wouldn't, but I get it. 
The Beamer will go 0 to 60 in 3.1 seconds. It'll do that quarter mile in 10.3, which is the exact wrong direction for those stats to be going in. But it makes sense when you think about it. The S1000 RR is a traditional as an inline four, as you'll find. Sure, it makes some good low down power because it's a leader bike, but all its power is at the tippy top end, which you won't really, really see reflected in these numbers. Also, BMW S1000 RR are a higher order life form that only cares about riding to the office in neon yellow high vis and going slow at the track on a weekend, so they don't really care about top speeds. Number three, the Honda CBR 1000 Sextuple R Super Power Mega Fireblade, otherwise known as the Double R RSP, the CBR Pirate Edition, the race bike racing for racetracks and all other aliases. Seriously, Honda, stop it with this. Didn't you know the old adage that two's company and three's a crowd? Anyway, the Fireblade is Honda's way of asserting dominance on the leader bike world and proving once and for all that they've got the biggest dick. The blade is packing a 999cc in line 4, putting down 215 horsepower and 83 pounds foot-toes of Torgos. For all intents and purposes, the Fireblade is a MotoGP motorcycle with headlights. Zero to 60 times haven't been released, but the 2015, the last SP Fireblade, could get it done in 2.5 seconds with the sub 10 second quarter mile time. The 2021 is even faster with the assistance of every single electronic rider aid under the sun, and some will claim a very trace amount of Mark Marquez's sperm right there on the seat. It'll run you a cool $28,500, which makes it the most expensive homologation motorcycle on the list. Let's take a listen. Number two goes to the Ducati Panigale V4R, the big brother Panigale and probably one of the most famous pasta rockets ever made, mostly because people never shut up about it in the comments. Let me ask y'all a question. How many of you actually have this bike on your phone as a wallpaper or something like that? No judgments, just curious. Let me know down below. This is the ultimate Biscotti mode motorcycle with a 998cc V4 putting down 221 horsepower and 83 foot-pounds of torque and stock trim, which is unbelievably fast for a naturally aspirated motorcycle. Now let's be honest, those folks who are picking up V4Rs probably aren't planning to send a motorcycle so expensive that the website says just contact the dealer at full speed, but if you were a maniac, how fast is this bike? Well, try as I might, I couldn't find real 0 to 60 times. Someone did it in 3.7 seconds, I saw another time as low as 3.1, but like so many other Ducatistas, I refuse to believe that a bike this powerful is that slow. Let's just pull a move from the supercar playbook and say the V4R speed is theoretical. Either way, you're paying $40,000 for the VASE model and a cool $47,000 for the additional racing exhaust, which will get you up to 234 horsepower. If you take that into account, it's the fastest 1,000cc motorcycle out there. But stock for stock, it's only number two. Finally, number one goes to the Kawasaki H2. What a shock, the supercharged sport bike takes the cake. It's putting down a frightening 228 horsepower and 104 foot-pounds of Torgos in stock trim. But people have cracked the ECU and made all sorts of performance parts for this bike, making it even more powerful. If you want it all in stock trim out of your leader bike, then this is the one for you. It can do 2.6 seconds in 0 to 60, but modified bikes are closer to 2.4 or less. You can easily crush out over 220 miles per hour if you wanted to. It's heavy at 525 pounds, and its trellis frame means that the bike will constantly feel like it's about to be ripped apart by the engine, but hey, that's part of the charm. Let's be honest, if you're buying an H2, you don't give a damn about lap times. You probably already don't care about that $29,500 hole left in your budget, but hey, I've owned five Daytonas, so no judgment here. Fact. A group of ferrets is called a business. How cute. Goodbye. And just like that, when you least expect it, Cowboy Aim is back at it once again. Why don't you click this video right here? You let me know what you think of it, okay? Leave me a nice comment, subscribe to the channel, leave me a like, do all those nice things, and y'all have yourselves a good day.